a sense of connection to the places where I belong. So in terms of my name, my name is uh, Searching Eagle. And so that tells me a lot about who I am as a person. Um, I'm also a member of the Martin clan. My homeland is the Ottawa River Valley. So all of those things, they're a part of who I am as a person. And I believe that for many indigenous people, the idea of connecting to place and to other people and feeling like you belong is a key part of ed education. And so that idea of education as shaping more than your readiness for a career came to the forefront for me yesterday as I listened to the keynote in the panel. And what stood out for me was that each of the individuals we heard from were on a learning journey that seemed to be in response to their environments and the circumstances before them. For Wanique, as with many of the panelists, her upbringing in the community and her strong cultural background was her center and a foundational place of learning. And so I think our theme for the day, Building Bundles for the Future, centers us in a really part and part of education. It's about the development of self in relationship with place and with people and with all of creation. And so in, in many indigenous cultures, what might be called a bundle plays an important role in developing an individual's sense of self across the, the lifespan. And so while I will say from the start that my knowledge on the subject is always developing and growing, what I have learned is that in a physical sense, bundles include physical items that, that are of significant importance in our ceremonies and everyday life. These include our eagle feathers, our medicines, our pipes, and um, all of those things that help us walk forward in a good way. Metaphysically, they represent the complex webs of teachings, histories, and ceremonies that are a gift, sacred responsibility, and inheritance that is carried, built upon, and passed down from generation to generation. In thinking about the knowledge and teachings we re received yesterday, I'm reminded of the importance of de developing my own bundle and wonder what more we could do as institutions to empower indigenous students who are learning to use the their own gifts and connecting with who they are as indigenous peoples. I wonder what more we could do to instill a sense of pride and belonging, not only within uh, this territory that they're, they're learning uh, to find home, but also connecting them back to those nations that they're a part of. How can we relate in better ways? I wonder how we can support students as they grow into themselves in response to the world around them. Are we educating the heart, mind, body, and spirit? And if not, how do we get there? These are questions we will consider as we progress through the day. And so before I hand it over to my MCs, I just want to, I guess, uh, I think it's really good that we laugh at ourselves. So I'm gonna tell you what happened on the way here. So I was, <laughs> I was leaving and um, Edna asked me, she's like, oh, I don't really know how to get there. I'm like, follow me, I know where I'm going. And so anybody who knows me knows that directions are not my thing. And so I put on my GPS and I just click, you know, work, not realizing that I clicked the Lakeshore campus. <laughs> and so I'm driving and then I look up and I'm like, gardener? I don't think we're going the right way. And so then, you know, at the same time, Tasha's calling me and she's wondering how, you know, what campus to go to. And I'm like, well, you, go, you gotta go to the North Campus. I'm heading to the Lakeshore Campus and I'm leading Edna in the wrong way. And then I hear a lot of laughter in the background. And, and so I think it's, what this taught me is, you know, even when you're running late and you think you know where you're going, Life can sometimes teach you that it's good to take a moment, have some patience, and uh, be kind to yourself. So it took me a little while longer to get here, but we had an amazing journey and a good laugh. So uh, now I want to bring our MC Bindigay, and he's going to take us off in a really good way. Hi, bonjour. Good morning. Uh, so I introduce myself as Bindige uh, Gizek. Uh, most people just call me Bean or Beaner or some variation of, uh, of my name. Um, and so I come from the Deshkan Zibi, uh, the Thames River, that little brown river that flows through uh, London, Ontario. Uh, that's my uh, homeland. But now I reside in the beautiful blue waters of uh, Walpool Island, a uh, very beautiful place. Have you ever been down there? Um, park this morning, I won't take too much time because we're already a couple minutes behind, but uh, Jason, I don't know who the architect was for this building, um, 
but as I came in this morning, I couldn't help but think that this was styled after the Jabberwocky shrit, you know, on Star Wars. You got to be a Star Wars fan, right? You know, look at it. It's the exact same shape. So whoever did this building, right, was a huge Star Wars fan. It's a beautiful building, though. Beautiful building. But that's all I could see this morning as I walked in was I'm walking into the Jabberwocky uh, little ship that crawls along the ground there, right? I'm a Star Wars geek. I'm a Star Wars geek. The ma third episode of The Mandalorian came out this morning, and I was tempted to watch it before I came over. <laughs> I didn't. I'm going to save it for later. Family movie. So at this time, though, before we uh, go any further, uh, we want to always want to acknowledge uh, the spirit, the great spirit, the kind spirit, Gijema uh, and give thanksgiving for our day. So at this time, I'm going to call up uh, Liz Ozamik, Tanya Leah Watts, and Jada Ponce, uh, as they'll be doing an opening prayer and song to acknowledge our day uh, and give thanksgiving. Uh, and we always say that the creator... The Creator only asked the Anishinaabe one thing upon the earth, uh, that to, to give thanks, to give thanks, giving. And so here we have our, uh, our opening prayer and song, so uh, please join with us in the best way you can. Aha bojo, ginu mi guando go, ma guando no ema a mikto dem. We quem kung mene domine sing don jaba, man pi besha nago joaneng de da. Mi guach, jem ne do, kin kenege go man pi gajetoin a king. Mi guach, me show me skizes. Be mawa se aje en en segishgak. Mi gwechge en dena nok mesnan. Eje me wa se aje et ge nidbekak. Mi gwechge ishkak me kwe. Kena ge go eje mi gwechge en segishgak. Mi gwechge be mazo en. Eno ge me Jim, Bish, Wesiak, Inwage, Gdanese, Wenan. Sema, Gimi Nago Nangwa, Udereshekia, Wabanang, Miguachwak, Kinegego, Udenekia, Mdegeso, Megase, Udenekia, Benjabat, Enagduendang, Udenekia, Shwandem. Miguetro de Nikia Jawanung, Miguetge or de Nikia Dinak, Mdege Wawashkesh, Enag Dwendung or de Nikia, Kinege or Jimmy Wetge, Wilnan, Mijim. How de Nikia Epungishmak, Nangabeonung, Miguetge in Dina, Kinege go or de Nikia, Mdege Nemki Benesi, Menage. Well, so, Mishkodebjeke. Ah, Giwet Nung, Miwetch Gay, Kina, Ejimi Wain, Gagi, or the Nikia, Memdegess, or Wapshkimakwa. Ebi dot gay, Nodjmoin, Squeziwin, Nonchke, or the Nikia. Miwetch Gijemnado. Kena gego gegi hejemi wain hensi gishgak. Shkak makwe mi gwechge kena emdegesa nebe. Mi gwech dishinde kit nungwa mampi kena maunjidiang. Menage chinchinabek mampi e ajik mi gwech kudagom. Mi gwech shisinde kit mi gwech mi gwech mi gwech mi gwech. The prayer that I shared with you, we always acknowledge our Creator. 
Gijem and Edo, for everything that is provided for us. We always acknowledge our grandfather's son for shining on us every day, each and every day. I say miigwech to Nokomis, the big Jesus, our grandmother moon, for shining on us at night. We acknowledge our mother, the earth, for everything that she provides for the, our life, for the animals, for the water, and also for our breath. I acknowledge the four directions, east, south, west, and north, and for all those animals that were here before us, we always acknowledge those animals, those beings that were here. The eagle in the east, the deer in the south, for providing the, our food and clothing when we needed it. In the west, we acknowledge the buffalo and the thunder beings that good water, thunder water. We acknowledge in the, in the north that bear, the great white bear, for the strength and for the healing that, that is provided for us. And again, to our creator, to our mother, the earth, for our life, and especially for the water that we need to pray for each and every day. So I say miigwech. I'm originally from Uquamakong. My name is Tanya Lee, and the three of us are going to sing uh, the AIM song today, otherwise known as the Unity Song. Um, we chose this song uh, for maybe an obvious reason that this is the Indigenous Knowledge Gathering, uh, and uh, we're singing it. Uh, with our minds thinking about unity and coming together and bringing our different perspectives to, to share and to listen today. And the one thing I wanted to add to this is, uh, so there were, we were practicing last night, and so I was just talking, I was like, Liz, do you think I could join in? And so this is the first time that I've really gotten up in a, in a context like this and sang. And so it's new for me, and um, it's something that I, I want to do.
I just wanted to say a quick word. <laughs> I did not expect to cry. <laughs> um, I just, I'm very happy to be here and be here with these strong women. And um, I'm just happy that these sorts of events are here for uh, young indigenous youth like me to be able to be with other uh, indigenous people. So I just wanted to say that. Hi, hi. Miigwech for the beautiful prayer this morning uh, and also the beautiful song. Uh, that song, if you're not aware, the American Indian Movement song, AIM song, as it's known as, uh, the long history of that song, that song uh, speaks to so many different levels about uh, how we as indigenous people, as Anishinaabe people, and at that time Indians, um, how we are clinging, clinging to hope. And for many people it was that song. It was that song that they learned, it was that song that they began to sing that uh, connected them, connected them to who they were as, as Anishinaabe people, who they were as, as Indians, right? Give them a sense of pride. And for many, it still does today. You know, for many, it still does today in terms of that some of the times when you see a young, group, young drum group starting up, it's the first song they learn. You know? Sometimes it's the only song they you know, can really sing really well. Right? But I think it's very significant that it's that song. That song that you know, was an awakening for our people, the American Indian Movement, the National Indian Brotherhood, and all the movements that started at that time uh, we're a movement, a movement of people and awakening uh, to what we're talking about today, which is building bridges, our building bundles for the future, right? Because that's what was started at that time. They started to reclaim, reclaim what was ours, right? Reclaim our songs, reclaim our ceremonies, and say that it was okay to do that, right? And say that it was okay to do that, which brings us to our point here today uh, where we're talking about continuing the building of that bundle. But it started 50 years ago, you know, and I was privileged this weekend to see an uncle of mine, you know, Clyde Belcourt, one of the founders of AIM, you know, this past weekend. He was there and uh, uh, quite, a, quite an impressively strong man, right? strong in spirit. And so uh, so just want to acknowledge that song, beautiful singing, uh, but a, a very touching song this morning uh, as we move forward. So with that, I want to uh, bring up our, our next uh, speaker. Uh, and I don't want to call this a land acknowledgement because this is actually a welcoming. This is actually a welcoming to, to his territory. So please welcome at this time Mr. Dan Secord uh, from the Mississaugas of New Credit First Nation to welcome us to his territory. Ani bojo. Nishnabe and Dow, Massaga and Dow, Mima and Jubawan. Ogamijang Kidwinan Minoa. I'll offer some words again. Um, some of the things I'm going to uh, mention, uh, you may have already heard, we have uh, some people that are at the gathering yesterday, and we also have some new faces today. Uh, I'm going to do a land acknowledgement and briefly uh, talk about who we are and the lands. Uh, here. Uh, so bear with me if, if uh, some of it's the same as yesterday. Uh, but my name is Daniel Secord, uh, or Sinan Nene. I'm from the sagas of the Credit First Nation. Um, the language is Pishinigining, Asqua Sing, and Zibiing. So that's the name of the grand, lands on either side of the Grand River. But uh, we're indigenous to these lands here. Uh, but these lands are also, uh, in time, uh, shared lands. Uh, with the Huron Wayandat Confederacy and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. 
And uh, now there's many people, uh, Métis, Inuit, and people from many places in the world. Uh, but this area here is uh, a really important place uh, for people. Uh, my nation uh, is uh, Mississauga Nation. Uh, to other Anishinaabe people, we introduced ourselves uh, in the language on where we where we live, or what kind of or what places on the land that we reside at. So at the river mouth, so where the lake and the river meet, there's a there's a bunch of areas. It's not just uh, GTA, um, Ishkan Zibe as well, uh, Thames River, many rivers, many places, um, and. Oh, and a correction from yesterday, sorry. Sometimes I get, and I talk about different things. Uh, it's from what I uh, hear when uh, community members and elders speak and things like that. So sometimes uh, I get mixed up when uh, I have to uh, re share those things or repeat those things. So uh, this region, uh, there's a wampum belt uh, uh, from uh, Majikining, from Rama, uh, and Mississauga is the credit. And, um, and uh, the people also came to Denoshone. Uh, it's the, uh, they have different names for it. Meshkwake uh, was his name, or uh, uh, Chief Yellowhead. Anyways, but there's five regions, there's five diamonds on that belt, and it talks about uh, between the lakes uh, within Mississauga territory. Uh, so this place is a place of the eagle. Uh, yesterday I got a little bit mixed up, uh, but uh, Spirit Island or Manitoulin Island, Bay of Beavers. The, one of the leading chiefs, a symbol of that area is, is a geagle, is the fish. Uh, I got a little bit mixed up. Uh, Midland area is uh, Amikwak, or a um, place of the beaver. Um, and Georgian Bay is a uh, place of the caribou. And this area here in the GTA uh, is a place of the eagle. So we have many names for different places on the land, but that's what this region is. And I'd like to say kidami kum, welcome to everybody. Uh, another thing uh, with our people, um, what happens is uh, we're, we're all Anishinaabek. Um, but our people at one time were a pretty big group, but illness and things like that affected our people. And, um, but what happens too uh, as being Anishinaabe is uh, we meet a lot of new people, uh, the French, Explorers came into uh, where the Grand River is, and they came with the Huron Wyandotte people, and uh, they asked, you know, who, you know, what the name of the lands were, and they asked them, well, who are these people and that, and uh, they met us, and we described on our particular group of Anishinaabe on where we like to live, and so. So that they know who they're exactly talking about in France, they they started using Mississaugas. Mississauga talking about the, the land, the geography itself. And at the same time, uh, the French also had uh, uh, missionaries go to uh, Mississauga River and uh, Sault Ste. Marie. And the same thing, they asked, you know, what Nishinaabe, which group are we talking to? And, they, and uh, the same thing, uh, they use the term Mississaugas. So to know, I guess, uh, which particular uh, communities um, they were talking to as they were traveling. So that's another reason why uh, we have a little bit of different uh, when dealing with uh, French and English, Americans and uh, Canadian government that call us Mississaugas, but we're Anishinaabe. And I um, just want to share a little bit about that. Uh, we say uh, miigwech to everyone for being here. And uh, uh, we want to acknowledge everyone that's here uh, because Whatever the stuff that's happening for Humber is, it's a really good thing for our people. Um, and these, uh, this medicine that's being made here, uh, we hope that it, as the students are here, that it's, it, it continues all the way through uh, for uh, wellness and care of the students. Because uh, I was a student at one time, and a lot of times uh, it's difficult for students. and. That wellness has to be all through the year, uh, what further time here, because uh, there's some points where our students uh, will struggle through the year, and they don't see as much things that uh, reflect who they are. 
But this building here, you start to see things that uh, are reflective of us. Because um, when I was in school, we didn't, it didn't, you were there and you're in a class of 300 students and there was, you know, you were sometimes your only student in the room and there was nothing that, ref you know, in, you had to speak a lot on and argue on, uh, on behalf of your, your people because you were the only student, that sort of thing. But I see things are changing and uh, like very, very quickly. And I could say miigwech again. Miigwech gives in doyek. So thank you for uh, listening. Thanks. Miigwech, Dan. And it's true. I think that Humber has done a, a, a magnificent job of ensuring that indigenous people are, are visible. Uh, in this place and that's you know it's another shining example up there and I like how it changes color too that that's really nice but that dodem uh, that dodem pole up there uh, with all of the clan symbols uh, but it's great uh, so all students can see it and all students recognize the importance of, of indigenous people uh, and our contribution uh, to this place to this country right and so with that uh, I want to introduce uh, one of the individuals that has been responsible uh, for all of the great initiatives here at Humber, uh, all of the initiatives such as this where we see Indigenous people in place. Right? Uh, so I want to call up this time uh, Mr. Jason Hunter. I uh, didn't put your official title down here, Jason, so I can't read through all, all that. Uh, but just know that Jason has been uh, here for many years, uh, has been dedicated to the inclusion and ensuring Indigenous people uh, have a place here at Humber. And he's done such a magnificent job of that that we see very high numbers of Indigenous students here at the college. And those Indigenous students know that they are supported uh, in their educational endeavors here at Humber. And so Jason uh, has, been a, has been a major proponent in that work. So please welcome at this time Jason Hunter, Humber College. Bonjour, c'est go, Tena Koto. Uh, I want to start off by saying miigwech, uh, being gay. I should also say um, my title doesn't matter and I take no credit for the fantastic work that's happened here. Um, but uh, we've got a lot of people who have, uh, who have been leading that in, in a lot of good ways. I want to say miigwech to, uh, to being gay, to Gina, to Liz, uh, to Daniel. Also our drumming and singing duo this morning for starting us off in a good way. Um, welcome to day two of the Indigenous Knowledge Gathering, uh, or IKG as we've come to call it here. Uh, Many of you who are around higher education probably know that we can't live without our acronyms, so uh, we don't have time, so IKG. Um, it's really my great pleasure to help to begin the day by welcoming you, welcoming you here this morning again in another way. And I think it's particularly significant uh, that we are in this building, the Barrett Centre for Technology Innovation. It's a, really a building with a leading edge technology that pro provides a tremendous learning opportunity for our students and the engagement of the broader community. I think it's also significant and perhaps more significant in this context uh, that this is a contemporary learning facility that features the prominent and beautiful marker at the top of the stairs that Bindigay already referenced, which serves both as a beacon uh, to this campus and also a reminder of the indigenous histories of this place and also its presence in a, in a contemporary context, I think. Uh, these stories were told to us by Jim Dumont, other elders, uh, other community members, and, uh, and, were, and were interpreted uh, by indigenous architects Ryan Gorey and Dave Thomas. So that's been a, a fantastic uh, addition and acknowledgement, I think, for, for the college. And, and as Bindigay said, a good reminder of, uh, of uh, where we sit in the context of Indigenous history. Humber's really pleased to host this uh, annual event, uh, both as a contribution to providing the space that's required for this kind of critical dialogue, but also as it, uh, because it provides us with a unique learning opportunity for our students, for our faculty, for our staff, for our community, for myself. Uh, we're relatively young as an academic institution. Uh, recently we celebrated our 50th anniversary and we're really even younger uh, as an aspiring ally and a partner on the path of truth and reconciliation. Uh, thank you then for all, to all of you in attendance for allowing us to continue to learn how to effectively honour the commitments that we are making as an in institution related to Indigenous education through the signing of the Indigenous Education Protocol in 2014, but also more recently uh, in our current academic and strategic plans where Indigenous education is prominently featured. Yesterday we were really pleased uh, to have Olympian Juanique Horn Miller deliver the keynote 
that really emphasize the criticality of listening, empathy, and dialogue, and, and the need to work together at all levels of society and across all peoples as we share the journey that, uh, that requires both that the truth be spoken, and, and I know that that's going to happen today and does happen, and that the hard work required uh, for reconciliation uh, be undertaken. This was followed by a youth panel, uh, and I, I use the word youth now for the ever-growing number of people who are younger than me, so, uh, so that's, uh, that makes, uh, makes up many of you in the room, I think. Uh, this panel really focused on the need uh, to reclaim wellness, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And, and then uh, I had the opportunity last night, uh, at the end of the day, to listen to some talented comedians, uh, both educating and entertaining us by sharing their personal experiences and perspectives in a very funny and authentic way. And I have to say, I haven't laughed that hard in a long time, so those of you uh, there probably find yourself in the same boat. It was, uh, it was really funny. Um, this morning, we're honored to have a very esteemed panel with us uh, to take on the important topic of building bundles for the future. Uh, so much of the work that is taking place uh, here and elsewhere is centered on relationship. And we're fortunate to have the uh, guidance of this panel that's here with us today. Uh, but not just today, really at, all, at various points throughout the year, uh, in formal ways and informal ways that really help us uh, in, in establishing our direction. Uh, the panelists, I, I have no doubt, will get their full due, as introduced by moderator Bob Goulet, uh, whose deep knowledge of Indigenous culture and strong business acumen are highly valued in the context of his position uh, here with the Humber Board. Uh, as is the mentorship uh, and the perspective that Bob provides to our resource staff, our, our uh, Indigenous Resource Centre staff, and also others at the college, including myself. Uh, the panel is balanced by a group of strong women, and that's already been a theme here this morning, uh, who, have, who have served many uh, communities for many years as traditional teachers, ceremonialists, advisors, and advocates. I'm personally really pleased today uh, to have my first opportunity to meet three people uh, who I've heard much about, but haven't had the opportunity to meet in person, Edna Manitowabi from Wakwemakong, Pauline Shirt from Saddle Lake Reserve, and Lucille Kelly Davis uh, from Monigaming. And uh, I should just mention that Lucille is also known as Kokum to one of our students and staff, Laureleen Whiteye. Not sure where Laureleen has gone, but uh, great to have her here, and uh, we hear lots about her. Uh, it is uh, also great to have Dan Longboat uh, from Six Nations back with us, and, uh, and an honor and a pleasure uh, for me personally, and I think for us as, a, as an institution, to be joined again by a friend to many at Humber, including myself, Ron Bull from Otago Polytechnic, who is here from uh, Aotearoa. Having said all of that, one thing for sure is that you didn't all come here to listen to me. So, uh, so I will uh, cut it short here and just say miigwech, niwa, kiora. Thank you. I look forward to learning from you and working with you all today and in the future. Miigwech. All right. So at this time, we're going to introduce our, our moderator for this panel session. Um, Bob Goulet is an experienced senior executive and consultant to industry, not-for-profit, and First Nation organizations. He has served as Chief of Staff, the AFN National Chief and Vice President, Communications and Public Affairs, well-versed in strategic policy and planning. He has served as the manager of the Culture Planning Unit and Strategic Policy and Planning Unit at the Ministry, Ontario Ministry of Culture. Uh, I just wanted to read Bob's uh, little short bio there just so I could read it. Uh, but Bob is uh, one of these individuals that is working uh, in our communities and outside of our communities, uh, working to better, better the situation for Indigenous peoples across the province and across Canada. You know, and you're going to see Bob not only working at a very high level doing policy, uh, but also working in the community, you know, being the local community MC and at the local powwow and all of those great types of things that he does. And so I want to welcome uh, this great individual, a great man in our communities, uh, Mr. Bob Goulet. Oh, oh. Good morning. Let's hear your voices. What we like to do here at Humber, we want to decolonize a few things. The first thing we're going to do is dispense with the podium. You like that? It's starting to look better? We're also going, just for this morning, dispense with the applause. You know, applause started back in 1492 around here, and we want to kind of forget that. Anytime we want to appreciate something or acknowledge something, we should be using our voices. So feel free to use your voice in any way when you acknowledge this good place, this beautiful place. Give it up for Humber. Use your voice. Woo -hoo! Not bad, not bad. We as Nishnabe, when we speak Nishnabe, when 
oftentimes when we acknowledge, we go, aha. So anytime somebody's done, like uh, uh, my sister, when she gave the, the, uh, the prayer this morning, she said, miigwech, and she finished up. We as Nishinaabe, we go, aha. So try that, aha. Not bad. Where Dan is from, Dan Longboat's from the Longhouse. They don't have those kinds of words. They sit nice and still, and I've seen Dan do this, and they do this. Mmm. And you got to put your face into that one. So you could try that too. Oh, everybody on the count of three, we're going to acknowledge Dan here. Mmm. One, two, three. Yeah. How's that, Dan? Bonjour, Nindwe Maganadok. Jacquet Nishnekas, Migizi and Odem. Nibising Ojibwe and Ishnabe, Dal Taganing and Nindon Jaba. Uh, Humber College, uh, I'm on the Board of Governors here at Humber College, and it is a Nishnabe, Haudenosaunee, uh, Wendat place. This is an Indigenous place, so I love being associated with Humber. What do you guys think of Humber? Some of you remembered, I heard a few claps there. But that's good. Um, before we get to the panel, and they gave us a full two hours, so we could take our time. We could talk as long as we want. In fact, if we wanted to go over two hours, you know, when we talk, when we teach, when we hear and listen to our knowledge holders, it takes as long as it takes. The worst thing I get is when I get an MC, and then we got line by line, and I got to uh, only allow Pauline four minutes for her uh, invocation. And uh, Pauline does pretty good. Uh, not, as, not as long as our, uh, our elder Jim Dumont, but uh, we gotta, we got to give our folks time to do this work. So we're going to be here right uh, for most of the morning. But I do want to do a couple of exercises before we get started. I want to talk about uh, how we introduce ourselves. Bindige Gijik uh, did that for us. Liz did that for us. You know, we introduce ourselves and we're very purposeful in how we do that. In fact, when I met Lucille, I've never met Lucille before, uh, Lucille from Onigaming. First thing I asked her was, you know, what's her name? And she gave me her name. And then, you know, then I asked her, oh, what's your clan? And then she's the, the Bijou clan. And all of, all of a sudden, I wrote, oh, that's right, you're a Kelly from Onigaming. All of a sudden, we put one, we add one plus one plus one equals Onigaming. Um, but that's how we do things. Whenever we uh, want to introduce ourselves, we start with our name. And we do that not just so we introduce it to each other, but we do that because we are introducing ourselves to the spirit. Sometimes each other's spirit, but sometimes, you know, broader the, the spirit that we're speaking to as a, as a whole. The next thing we say is we give our clan. And we all have clan. We, that's our family. So however you want to introduce yourself as your family, we do that. And then the third thing we do is introduce where, are from, where we're from. I'm from Nibising, a place called Tigoning in Donjaba, Nibising First Nation. That's where I'm from. So wherever you identify as home, you know, mention that in your introductions. But the, before we do that, as an Anishinaabe, the very first word we give, and it's a very special word, is the word bojo. And bojo doesn't mean bonjour. Some people think we're speaking French and we don't speak very well. But the word bojo comes from the given name of the very first Anishinaabe that was lowered in this place, lowered to this earth. And we say that word, bojo. And it's a formal greeting. When I shake your hand, when we speak, when we start uh, our oratory, when we start giving those teachings, we start with that word, bojo. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand up and find a partner to face. And you're going to start with the word, bojo. Give your name and your clan and where you're from and shake their hand or give them a hug. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's acknowledge each other with our voices. Woo! 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 All right, you could grab a seat now. Very nice introductions. Now we all know each other. That's how we're supposed to do things. 
Now's the time I'm going to introduce you to each of our panelists. And then, uh, then I'm going to start introducing the panel and then uh, you know, presenting a question. And then we're going to go one by one and each of you will get a chance to answer the questions. But I'm going to get rid of these, uh, the, the uh, standing microphone here so we can all be comfortable. So I'm going to introduce you to uh, a few folks that are going to be our panelists today. I'm going to begin with uh, Edna. Edna's here with us. Edna's from Wikwem Kong. Uh, her uh, Anishinaabe name is uh, Sinikwe, and she is of the uh, Makwa Dodeman. She's of the Bear Clan. It says here that Edna is a well-known ceremonialist and traditional teacher. She's been an educator and a strong leader for the revitalization, revitalization of Anishinaabe tradition, ceremonial, and uh, spiritual practice. She is fifth degree Madewin. Ooh. Midewin, for those of you who do not know, Midewin is, uh, refers to our heart, a day. So she, she carries that way of the heart. Our original traditional society, the keepers of our stories, the keepers of our ways of life, these sacred bundles, our spirituality. So Edna not only is fifth degree Midewin, she is, I knew her, she was our head woman in our Three Fires Medewin Lodge. Now she was blessed by the Spirit, uh, and she now leads and establishes her own lodge called the Minwewe Wigan Meday Lodge, which is the beautiful sounding lodge. Minwewe Wigan. So a big round of applause. Lift your voices. You could clap if you want for a Sinikwe Edna Manitowabe. All right, we're having fun. Now I introduced myself to her just a minute ago. She's next on my list. Lucille Kelly Davis is from Onigaming First Nation in Lake of the Woods, and that is Treaty 3 territory. Uh, she's a well-known uh, traditional teacher, Gokum, and uh, Ojibwe language advisor. She really helps out a lot of the organizations there with the, with the language. She's an inspiration not only to her family, but her community and all those that she works with and all those that work with her. And we're going to be blessed with her today. She's provided invaluable guidance with a number of initiatives, including Christy Belcourt uh, worked on something called Walking with Our Sisters, a commemorative project about missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and Lucille, Davis, or Lucille Kelly Davis uh, did that work. Her Anishinaabe name is Nigon Nibinesiak. Oh, Nigon Nibinesiak. Oh, she is third degree Mede as well. Oh, we're filling up everything here. We're lots of Mede, uh, Kwe, and Mede, uh, Nene. And she's also of the Bijou clan. That's the Lynx clan. So, big welcome to Lucille Kelly Davis. All my Sama stuck together. I took it back. <laughs> Nishnabe giver. <laughs> Next, I want to introduce you to a um, very special person to me, uh, Pauline Shirt. She's of the Saddle Lake uh, Reserve in Alberta, part of Treaty 6. Uh, Pauline's a Nishnabe name. She just gave it to me. Um, Kibanese. And she's of the Red Tail Clock Hawk Clan. She is also third degree Mede Kwe, fourth degree Mede Kwe as well. So uh, happy to be here with Pauline. She's recognized for her commitment to the urban indigenous community. In fact, she was one of the founders of the Wandering Spirit School here in Toronto. So uh, very well known here in the city, a lecturer, and she works uh, quite often with uh, George Brown College as their elder. She's uh, had me come and MC the powwow there once in a while. So Edna, our Pauline and I work together quite well. She serves as a mentor to many indigenous youth and many different governments also come to her to, uh, to get advice. So she does a lot of great work making sure Anishinaabe indigenous voices are uh, well uh, heard here in the city. So a big round of applause to Pauline Shirt for being here. Now what can I say about Dan Longboat? Dan, I'm going to spend the weekend with your sister over in, uh, we're going to Onondaga Grand Council. It's going to be a good weekend. So Dan is a celebrated educator, 
teacher. He, uh, was on, I think he's still on sabbatical from Trent University, still doing his, uh, his good work there. Uh, Dan creates links between the indigenous knowledge and science, promotes the use of that good mind. And that's a central philosophy for the Haudenosaunee, the Six Nations people, who this is their traditional territory as well. We did share this territory. This is the territory of the, of the dish with one spoon. So when he brings us that knowledge, we acknowledge that in that good mind, that we should all work towards that good common mind. And he uh, also works as, uh, um, and talks about the importance of our responsibilities we have as human beings in restoring the earth for future generations. And he's from Six Nations, the Grand River. Big round of applause to Dan Longboat. No way, Dan. And we got a very special guest. Humber College has established a relationship with uh, an institution in New Zealand called the Otaga uh, Polytechnic Institute. And uh, Ron Bull is here, and Ron is uh, Māori from New Zealand, and uh, his title there is uh, Tumuaki Wakako. He is the head teacher of the uh, of uh, Otago Polytechnic. Ron Bull. His, uh, his wek papa includes Wetaha, Kati Mamo, and Kaitahu. And he's been involved in harvesting preparation, preservation, and sharing the food for many generations. In fact, I tried to Google him last night, and I found a YouTube video, and he's cooking and he's eating. He's, he is real indigenous man over there. It's, it's all about that. It's all about food. In fact, hey, I, I, I love your uh, necklace. I have one just like it. I should have worn it today. But uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Ron Bull, now a director, again, of Indigenous Education at Otago Polytechnic. Ron oversees Indigenous curriculum development and the embedding of culture into the institution. He draws on traditional knowledge systems of his people to inform educational practice. Big round of applause to Ron Bull for being here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying my best. So I'm going to do a bit of an exercise with all of us here today. I'm going to put away my pronunciations because that didn't help me at all. I'm going to ask you to everyone to close your eyes. Close your eyes. No matter if you're Indigenous, Nishnabe, Haudenosaunee, Maori, you know, think about yourself. Think about whoever you are, who you identify as, as a spirit being. Think to the, that spirit way about us. Even if you're a student here, you carry a bundle. Think of the bundle that we carry. A lot of us, some might be thinking of a physical bundle that we carry. For us, mide and inewag, kwewag, we carry a mide bundle with us. Some of us carry pipes. Some of us carry you know, an eagle feather, drums, shakers, all of those things that help us do the work that they do. Think of the spirit of each of those things and how they help us. As you're thinking, breathing in through the nose, be aware of your breath that you're taking, that every breath is life, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and think of those bundles. But now think beyond the physical of those bundles and what those bundles give you as gifts to live your life, to really carry on with that wellness, to look after ourselves, to make us strong teachers, to make us strong in this way of life, restoring that balance to becoming indigenous, to becoming that being who we are. So I'm going, I've got a few questions. You can open your eyes now. You've got, you're thinking about that bundle. So that bundle isn't just that bundle that we keep and bring to ceremonies. It isn't just that, uh, um, that mide way on we carry as Nishnabe. It isn't just that pipe. It isn't just those things. Sometimes I often refer to the students carry lots of bundle. You see them as they're walking and getting off the bus. They're all carrying a bundle. They're carrying the books that they need. They're carrying their iPads. They're carrying their pens and papers. All of those things that they need, to, those tools to help them learn. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. 
those bundles that help us do this work. So, uh, and especially in the work of education, all the people that are here are workers in Nishnabe, uh, Nishnabe education, or Haudenosaunee education, Maori education. So we're going to talk to each of these uh, panelists about that. So again, we're going to be building those bundles for the future. What do these bundles that we carry, what kind of tools do our children need, our grandchildren's children, to the seventh generation to obtain this life, to obtain this indigenous traditional knowledge that we're celebrating today? So panelists, I think there's a number of uh, microphones around. I'll call upon uh, each of you, so we'll have to share these microphones. They're kind of like talking sticks. I always thought we should put some eagle feathers on the, uh, on the microphone and use them as talking sticks. So the first question I'm going to ask, and I'm going to go to a Sinique. I know you didn't want to go first, but I'm going to go with you first. That uh, we're going to ask you, based on your understanding, based on what you have experienced in your life, what does it mean? to have that bundle to be physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually whole, to have that balance. What is it like to have that bundle for you? Sinique. We quem kung and given to cook and go, many do many sing. Good or choke, ni jan suck. No shank, dash niche. Dan kobajagan suck. Junk sway. Get to me which wind them. O geni many do. They been to get can I go gosh at thought. As you join me go on in Sagijak. Minogewa come a man on the Kimanan. Ni wing went down a makesha minute to Adak. Nemeshoma second go come a sack. Scarys win gay ni yama. We could just to one where we never weep myself. Mem de gewa. Jaja Nikchipids there. Gitchi me wet when them. Moshkene when be mad to see when. Mewe, knee jansak. No shank. Dan Kobajagansak. Me as a moshkene any be mad to see when. Me gabe and jip mussel. Winje. Who I am and where I come from, my purpose and where I am going, all of those things have a lot to do with the life that I carry, this vessel that I am, who I am, a Sinique, the spirit that I am. Anishinaabe kwe, mede kwe. That's who I am. Makwa, my connection to the land, is that bear. The thunder beings, my grandmothers and my grandfathers. Those are the entities that help me. But most important is who I am as a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. I am truly blessed. I am truly blessed because my life is full. And it is the reason why I walk. This is the reason why I move. This is the reason why I keep moving. I keep going. I have six children, three sons and three daughters, a dozen grandchildren. I'm so blessed. And now, nine great-grandchildren. 
So I am so blessed my life is full. And they are the reason why I keep moving. I keep going. I'm climbing on my last hill. And uh, I'm having a great old time because I'm surrounded by love. I'm surrounded by compassion and kindness. And I don't know how much time I have here, but I do want to say one of the first teachings when I went searching, because there was a time I felt an emptiness, a void, and I had to find what was missing in my life. But it was a spirit, my own spirit, that called out to me and a sound of the drum that delved into the core of my being and woke me up and said, I don't know if it was telling me to follow my own drum, the sound of the drum, but that's what I did. I wondered, what was that? Why did it have such an impact on me? And so I sought out the grandmothers and the grandfathers. And that journey took me a great distance to find the knowledge keepers. Because back in those days, and that was back in the 60s, back in the 60s, because a lot of us were wondering, who am I? Identity. Where am I going? Where did I come from? What is my purpose in life? So I too was asking those questions as a young person, as a young woman, looking, searching. And it was the grandmothers and the grandfathers. And yes, I found my way to the mountains, to the Cree people. There's a very uh, beautiful, renowned elder that a lot of us have received our teachings from him, a Kiyunine. And he made a very, very, he said something to me one time about treaty, how the first treaty was made. And the first treaty, he said, was made when a woman, after giving birth, and before the cord is even cut, puts her child to her breast. When she puts her child to her breast for the first time, she's being kind. She is teaching kindness. And she is teaching honesty. Sharing, that bonding, that sharing of herself, giving strength to the newborn. That's the first treaty. The mother is the first teacher, he said. A woman knows, a mother knows, has this intuitive knowledge, the intuitive mind and the heart coming together is is vital. And so for me, I've strived. It took me a long time. And child after child, grandchild after grandchild. Each one that I was able to catch as they came through a beautiful, beautiful spirit coming into the world 
has given me something, has brought me something, has taught me something. And I too have a mjaklet. <laughs> My children, I have the love. I have their love. My grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. It not only feeds me, but it encourages me to keep on moving up that hill because I want to leave good tracks. I've done the best that I can to leave something behind, to leave beautiful bundles for them for them to embrace and to help them on their journey, their journey, their path. Those tools and their, those items that are going to help them. So for me, those values are inherent. Those values that we carry within us, that's our first bundle. Our first bundle when she does that act and puts her child to her breast and takes that umbilical cord and gives it to the earth and establishes where, they, where we come from, that umbilical bond with the earth, our true mother, our real mother. The father takes the placenta, the afterbirth, and goes and gives it back to the earth and says, thank you for giving me life. A brand new spirit that can be with me. And I thought at that time, so much we have lost. So much. But we're so blessed to have places like this, allies, Humber College, to have allies like the Maori. our people, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, who hung on to that knowledge so that we might have life. We might have life and we might have the energy. And yes, I heard those beautiful young people yesterday and it gave me hope. It gave me hope. I thought, our young people, they are resilient, they are strong, and they know, they know where they're going, they know what they want, they know their purpose. And so, I can keep going. And I like to think that I danced into this world, my spirit danced into the world, and I liked to visualize myself laughing and having a great old time as I dance out. Being grateful and thankful because I feel that I have come into the world to do what the Creator, what our Mother the Earth has asked me to do. And for me, I see that beautiful lodge that stands in my community now. It's not my lodge. No, it's not Edna's lodge. It's for the people. It's for our young. It's for our grandchildren. It's for those ones that are yet to come because my community was bankrupt. And now we are doing the best that we can to lift up, lift up our people. And with songs, with stories, with ceremony, those are our bundles, those are the tools, those items that we use to lift us up. And I'm I'm just so grateful for this beautiful life. 
I say miigwech for where I've been, <laughs> where I've been taken, what I've been shown. Chimigwech dikit nikanaganak kenegego geni gabishujwe de migoa gabishanata magoange. Hi, hi, nikanaganak. Hi, miigwech nikanagana, a big round of applause and uh, raise your voices for a sinique. Ron, our guest of honor, all the way from uh, Oteroa. How's not, that? Not bad. Uh, Ron, let us know from your experience, uh, what does it mean? What bundle do you carry in order to be well, to have that balance between the physical, mental, emotional, and the spiritual? What do you carry? What do you bring? Oh, well, uh, yeah, kia ora koutou. Um, so my, my first greetings are actually to the land that we're on, to the, to the, to the, to the waters that feed the land, uh, and to those footsteps of the people that sit within this land. Uh, I, I acknowledge the people uh, that have been here for many, many generations before us, um, to your families and uh, to those that are going to be here for many, many generations after, um, after we've gone. Um, ko waiau, uh, uh, ko hana nui rau, ko te whatawhata oku mauka, ko aparima te awa he rere atu ki te ara kiwa, uh, ka rere te waiau te ara kiwa ki te moana tā pukapuka a tāwhaki. Um, so for me to, to introduce myself, I actually turned that, uh, um, turn that model upside down. For our people, the first thing that we do when we introduce ourselves is we start off with the largest piece of landscape that we associate ourselves with. So I talk about the mountains that, uh, that we see, that we, that we live under the shadow of. In that introduction, I talked about the river that flowed from the mountains, that fresh water that, that flows through the landscape and feeds the people and feeds the land. Um, within that um, introduction, I then talked about the place that that, that water runs out into, uh, the, 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 the river that I called the Aparima, um, who was a, a, a woman of, of very high status in our, in our whakapapa, in our genealogy. We named the river after her. Uh, flows down into uh, a body of salt water and in that salt water um, sit a lot of food that we eat. Uh, we, we, we're water people. We love being in the water, around the water, uh, feasting out of the water. But the water that I referred to goes further down south um, from the mainland uh, to a small island, a very small island off the coast. Uh, and that island our people call, call him Kanawera. Uh, and that island on there is... Um, is the home of the titi, of, of the mutton bird. And that's one of the primary uh, food sources that we'd gather at certain times of the year. So we'd make the journey down to this island as families, as family groups, and each year we'd go to the same place on the same islands and we'd harvest this, this, this mutton bird, this titi. So when I introduce myself... Um, as a sort of a reverse of, of, of how we did before. I'm inconsequential. My name is inconsequential. I'm just a part of this very big whakapapa, this genealogy, this story that comes from the mountains down into the rivers, into the sea, and down into the islands, and mixes with, with the bird, with our food source. So for me, when I think about that story of a bundle that, that I carry, the, the first place that I went to was to that island. Uh, our people, we, we're, we're very, very lucky in our colonial history that we've never lost contact with this island that we go to. We are the only people that set foot in that place. Our families, when we go there and we, we, we harvest the birds, um, we are the only people that have ever been on that land harvesting that bird. So for me, when I think about the bundle, I think about the food that we're lucky enough to be around and have the relationships with and the, um, uh, 
the, 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 the processes that we go through for harvesting and preparing and eating that food. But the relationship that we've got with the bird um, goes deeper than just that food relationship with our stories, and it's been, it's been backed up by uh, Western scientific um, um, evidence as well. As our bird, he's a migratory bird. And when he leaves our island, he goes all around the Pacific Rim in a four-month-long journey around the Pacific Rim. And when they come back, they nest in exactly the same place. So our families, when we go into that place that only we've been to, we harvest the birds that are of the same families that have only been in that place. Different bird families go to different islands. We've got a relationship, a family relationship, with these birds that just go to this one place. So when we go there, um, and growing up as a, as a young man down south, um, we'd go there for two months of the year. We'd leave the school books behind, actually. The teachers would give us the school books, we'd throw them off the side of the boat. <laughs> tell, them, tell them it was a bit of a rough trip, eh? I lost all the gear. But for, for two months of the year, we'd go down to this place with no electricity, no running water, no contact with the outside world, and we'd just live as family in that place with that bird. So when I think about bundle, I think about going there with my grandmother, with my, my tawa, with my poa, my grandfather, my mother, my uncles, my aunties, my cousins, uh, for that wonderful time. Actually, probably only two days that are wonderful. You know what it's like being around family. Eh? The first wee, but it's all right. But, man, two months of them. <laughs> um, but being in that place with those people and the practices that we, that, we, that we employ to catch those birds, those traditional practices being able to, to stand on land, literally put our, put our hand into the earth and get food together as family. And those lessons that have been passed down from the old people to us, um, that's the bundle that I carry and that's the bundle that I'm prepared to pass on. But I just want to say, actually, I'm a wee bit intimidated sitting up here, eh? I mean, look, look at these fellas here. I'm, I feel like a wee bit of an imposter, to be honest. Just the, the young follower of the group, so uh, um, So I acknowledge the great wealth of knowledge that, that, that sits here, uh, and I feel humbled by it. So um, kia ora, thank you for having me here, and uh, yeah, kia ora, kia koutou. Miigwech. Miigwech. Acknowledge Ron. Thank you very much, Ron. Nigan Bnesi. We're going to come to you next. Lucille, uh, what, in your experience, what bundle do you carry that helps you be well? You know, again, keeping that balance between the physical, mental, emotional, and the spiritual. Bonjour. Ni gan e bina sik digo pishio do tem ni sing ni metel oega kwechi meg no gom e ani ke ege jeme no ke jeme no ya pana oe. Be mate se tanish na be miat to ya me mikwen da man nin oe anish na be to en chi shaing mi ya mikshe ya kena hep o atamang ke nin gi a kos kan gi kan da sena je ma o ya gi ikket o o we ge gitte si menan ke win gi on nishing mishke nin be je gon gi on nishin Kawin gi kan da sena de ge shan ka jin kaman mi o e anishna be to en a pichink china dan mi man on go men cha me ka nishna ke na ma ge go ki pit go sin o e ge nin ki bi on pi ge go an ke na ge go ki pit ke na ma go an ke ge a we ka gi o te te an kana bachata ke ma ge ngi chwa so be bo ne na to ki ga no shit e i ngi i go ting ge ga ga no na ga ni shna be ngi i ga ni shna de ngi ko sa se a ni sh ha man chu go to go ni e ga i tang ngi na tam ske chi ma ga me na go Oh, 
My name is uh, Lucille. Um, my Nishnabe and Wizowin is Nigani Bina Sik, stands for Front Eagle Woman. Um, uh, three, um, three times, Midewin. Um, um, I come from um, a place uh, called Onigaming. It's located between um, Fort Francis and Kenora, Ontario. So I was raised on a reservation. It's called Whitefish Bay. I don't know if anybody has ever heard that, but they used to have real huge powwows there at one time. Good drum group, too. <laughs> Anyways, that, that's where I come from. And I was raised in the traditional way of life. All my life, I was raised like that. Um, we didn't eat uh, like what we do today. We, we didn't have that. Um, my dad was uh, a good, he provided for us. He worked hard. He was an outdoor per person. My mom was an outdoor person too. While us kids grew up, uh, we had chores. We had so many chores to do, to the point where um, we weren't really allowed to go play outside like the other children until we finished our chores. That's just the way we were brought up. Today, I appreciate the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot of legends when I was growing up. It had to be in the winter time not during the summer. And there's also teachings about that, why they do that. But anyways, um, I learned about the trees, the Anishinaabe Wiesowinan. I learned about the um, environment. I learned so much just by listening to the legends, we were told. One legend, one legend took four nights and then we had to remember, like, what was that about? If we didn't remember, we got a scolding. But you know what? As children, when we were growing up, we were never hit. But I didn't want to make my mom mad because I didn't like the, the face that she gave us. <laughs> so we were always careful with that. I grew up with brothers, five brothers and uh, four sisters. So we, we, we were a close-knit family, helping each other out all the time. And uh, I'll go back to the legends, because did you know uh, in Ishinaabe Moen, the legends have a meaning. It's a teaching in there, now that I know. Because if I, hadn't, if I didn't hear those legends, I wouldn't even know what the trees are called. I wouldn't know about the animals, what they're called, everything. So that, that was part of our teaching growing up. And as for the uh, young um, youth today, one of these days they will find their root too just by listening to the elders and seeing all these things that all of a sudden are starting to come up. Because there was a time when um, 
We almost lost our language. I'm a residential school survivor. I didn't lose my language. I stuck to it. I whispered language to the other girls who could understand my language. And that's how I learned uh, some of the other languages too. I have three Anishinaabe Muin languages plus English. Okay. So, um, so now, um, being um, in a residential school, I started to, um, I have to say, I'm not gonna go that way today. Maybe another time, because it, it hurts, and I have to say uh, I'm strong. I'm still here today. I still have my language. So, um, you know what, just like what the, she said, I could just go on and on and on and on with you guys. <laughs> and guess what? I can't really see that well. I have cataracts, so everything is just a blur. I'll be having surgery when we return back to um, our, um, where, where, we, where I come from. So it's a good thing I have cataracts because I can't see everybody. <laughs> I like to put a little humor when I talk to the people. It gives me, uh, it gives me uh, patience. It gives me um, just being proud of who I am. Okay. And this is what I want to send a message to the youth who are here today, to the young people. Be proud who you are. Be proud. Look for your roots. Go find, uh, like if you're interested in Midewin, it's, it's here. It's back. We lost it. Now we, we got it back. And there's no way that could ever, ever be taken away from us. We, we hid it out there so it wouldn't be taken away from us. So it's back, it's alive. Just like our languages will be, someday you'll hear people speaking Anishinaabemwin, and it's such a beautiful language. Don't be ashamed to speak it. So I'm happy to be here. Miigwech for your sema. Mi'ya pama minawa. Miigwech. Miigwech, big lift your voices for Nigan Nibedesik. Beautiful. And you know you can't see them, but they look really good looking today. Hey. <laughs> We're going to ask Gibana uh, Se, uh, Pauline Shirt, to uh, answer that question as well, Pauline. And I know Pauline carries a lot of great gifts. And uh, what does it mean? What kind of bundle do you carry in order to be well, uh, Pauline, physically, mental, emotionally, and spiritually? Oh, wow, that's a loaded question I can answer. That's why I'm alive in here, and I'm so happy to be here with each and every one of you, especially one special person in here I haven't been with for so long, and she is my older sister, the one I met here when I came here from Alberta, and that's uh, my dear sister here. And uh, I just welcome her, her and her family. Well, I just want to say, dance. Bonjour, the way my Ganaduk, and in Kikwe, because my name is, my real name is uh, uh, Thunder Woman. And I was born 70, it's going to be 77 years old, you know, and uh, on a really cloudy, blustery, you know, all the, all the, uh, all our, uh, the thunder beings were sounding their voices. And, uh, and on July 13th, and 77 years ago. So I am, I am a Nihio Squail. And I speak my language, and I am, uh, I have, uh, you know, I come from a place called Nitskabuni, which means Saddle Lake, Alberta. And it's 132 miles northeast of Edmonton. And, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, born at home 
with a midwife, my uh, grandmother, who were my teachers. Sometimes I didn't listen to her, but most of all, she was there teaching me, helping me to enter, to come into this world, you know. And uh, so I, I am so grateful to her, you know, also the Sema that had been given to me here. I asked, what should I say? What can I say? I mean, uh, I, I have been posed a question, okay? But, you know, as grandmothers, you know, we always, uh, you know, we always ask spirit, what can I say? What can I put forward? So people who came from far, far away and, you know, uh, then come and uh, take something home with them. So what I have in here is a Sema, and I thank, and I thank Humber College for inviting me here as a, one of the speakers. And I just want to say miigwech also to uh, my helper here, Gibbon say, and I, you know, she, she's here and always, always is with me. So I just want to say, uh, you know, how happy I am to be here and tell you a little bit about my story of where I come from, of what my bundle is and what has made me feel well. I come from, I came uh, here in um, 50 years ago. I was counting, uh, you know, I had to borrow a pencil and, you know, see how many years have I been here? I've been here 50 years, can you imagine? I came in here on a train with my three children in, um, in, uh, in the late 60s. I was born and raised traditionally. That's what has kept me alive. My bundle was very rich. I come from a very rich cultural family. And uh, we, speak our, we spoke our language and I got kicked out of the residential school because I didn't want to be a, a good Catholic little girl, so. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's one of them. That's what made me so well. And, uh, and then uh, I was brought up with uh, sweat lodges where my, uh, in those days, sweat lodges were only, only used by the men. And uh, so I, as a little girl who didn't want to be up, in the, up on the hill, you know, with all my other sisters who, uh, who were, you know, learning how to, you know, the culinary arts and all that, I, I came, I went to the barn with all the animals. So I am actually a cowgirl, and, you know, so I was, that's the way I was brought up. I was brought up with the land, to appreciate the land, and, you know, when my father, you know, uh, was stooking and also, uh, you know, uh, seeding and uh, taking care of all those animals. That's where my life began. And also the sweat lodges. I was a, a real, you know, uh, uh, my father's best friend. So I was helped. I used to help with the sweat lodges. I used to sit by the door and listen to them. And, and I used to think, and I still think, uh, uh, the sweat lodges are the most fun places in the world because my uncles and my father, they used to laugh and laugh and tell jokes to each other in that sweat lodge. And that's the way I was brought up. But the women also went periodically when they wanted to cleanse themselves. They would just come from the kitchen and just plop themselves in the in a sweat lodge. Not like, you know, everything has to be done and all that stuff. But things were done. That's the way I was brought up. And uh, so... I was very lucky in that way. Everybody spoke uh, uh, Nihio, you know, and uh, Michif, and uh, so, you know, uh, all these, th all these uh, teachers that I had, my mom and dad, my sisters, my, you know, my brother, and my uncles, my aunties, they were all my teachers, my grandma and grandpa, and they were there all the time. They used to have their, t pitch their tents outside the, uh, our house, and that's how we used to go visit them. We used to go and eat with them, and you know, and learn everything about the culture, everything about the way of life, a way of life, because that's what it is. It's a way of life, and that's the way. That's the way. You know, we are bringing our children back again. You know, and I see that. I see that with my children, my grandchildren. How 
you know, they are drug free and alcohol free. They're in their 20s, you know, and that's the way, that's the way, it's because of our hard work, it's because of the wellness that I have brought into my, uh, into my life. And when you talk about wellness, I just want to say that every family has a medicine. Every family has medicine, medicines. I, I uh, went to, when I was young, I uh, took herbology and I learned about 3,000 you know, herbs and all that. Till my father said, said to me, hey, my girl, he says, we have our own medicines. Use them. That's when I dropped herbology, you know, and I just, uh, uh, so I just want to say that to you. You have your own medicines. And the other thing, too, you have is uh, you have your own songs, okay? I have two family songs that I know that are only, my family can only sing. That's our medicine, and that's why we are so well, you know, it, you know, and uh, I know I went through the whole gamut. I had three, three, uh, you know, uh, cancers, and uh, you name it, I had it all. But guess what? I never went to the, uh, I never went to the hospital. People used to think I was crazy. Used to think I was crazy, <laughs> and uh, but I went to our lodges. I traveled thousands of miles. Billions of miles with my family. People supporting me when I couldn't afford gas, you know, to go to Alberta. Or bundles or, you know, uh, flags or medicine to go, to go there and you know, be, with my, uh, be with my family. And I want to thank them because that's where I got well. But the most important thing is I'm very stubborn. <laughs> very stubborn. And I just say, hey, you know, I focus. This is it. And this is the way I was brought up, and this is who I am. My spirit, I have, I know I have a strong spirit, you know, and I have lost a lot of friends through that, but it's okay, you know. I still have all of you here, <laughs> and it's so good to see that. So I have, I have many, many, many things that, I, that helped me, medicine, songs, ceremonies, and all that, and I, and I'm, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I became a, uh, uh, when, I, when I first came in here 50 years ago, I met, I met my sister and her family. And they helped me. They helped me, you know, uh, be welcomed in this part of the country. So also, I want to say miigwech to friends like Gloria, you know, Carrie, and others, okay? And I'm kind of, get, you know, uh, my eyesight is not too good right now. So if, if you... Over there, the second table. If you waved at me, I wouldn't be able. I wouldn't smile at you or wave at you because I can't see you. But I am going to see well, you know, because I'm going to get some treatment, traditional treatment, you know. So, and the same thing, like you know, my body is uh, kind of, you know, a little wobbly and everything. But you know, there is good life. There's hope and everything. You know, the future looks great and all that. Look at all the speakers that came in here and gave you those, uh, those, uh, you know, the great. Great, great, you know, food of thought, okay? So I just want to say miigwech to, uh, to uh, the creator for bringing me here, for in your presence, you know, with all of us together here. This tobacco here that I have, I, when, when I opened it, it was you and I speaking, your spirit, all of your spirits speaking to me. So that's, I say miigwech to that, and I say miigwech to, to my helper here. But I also, the last thing is I want to say miigwech to the water because I'm a Medawanaquia too. So I just want to say miigwech because the rivers of life are flowing very freely in our lives, okay? Very, very good, you know? So just remember the water, okay? Go and offer some water. But I also, the last thing I'd like to say is there are little ones. That's what our, our sister was saying and others there are little ones, our future. They're talking, they're getting up. There's a book in here, you know? And if anybody wants to uh, come and get this book that speaks to them, I only have one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's yours, okay? And I just want to say all of these pe young people, seven, eight years old, you know, who, are, who don't have, who are not afraid to speak up, who are, you know, t teach, helping us, you know, reminding us how to be strong, okay? 
you know, because say, hey, because they're already, uh, you know, the second generation of the seventh fire, and the seventh fire is doing great, 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 great. So look at the little ones, okay? So miigwech. Uh -huh. Let's hear your voices for Nimki Kwe, miigwech. We're going to give the same question to my uh, brother, Dan. Oh, we're going to do an auction after, Pauline. Uh, you only have one copy. It's no worth getting 20 bucks for it. I'd probably get 100 bucks for that at least. Just kidding. In our lodge, we like to have a good time and uh, raise money. So uh, us Medewan, we like, to, we like the old auction. So, Oh, miigwech. Maybe we'll find a, maybe we'll find a, a good charity to auction this off for. Miigwech. Oh, Dan. We're not going to forget about you. My brother Dan Longboat is here. Dan, what kind of bundle do you carry to help maintain your, um, your wellness? Again, that balance between the physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. Uh, greetings, everyone. And I hope that you're happy, healthy, and at peace. So, Roroya Gewen so my name is Roroya Gawain, it means he clears the sky, and I'm a Turtle Clan Mohawk from Grand River Territory in a beautiful Oswegan, and uh, I'm happy to be here today, and uh, I'd like to uh, maybe make mention that uh, I'm a recovering academic. <laughs> so, since we're in Humber College, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, Lots of stuff to talk about, and uh, I really want to honor, you know, our speakers here today, um, you know, to, uh, that they have come, you know, that distance in their life and that they are sharing now their, their experience with you. And uh, so understand about how important that their words are to you and how uh, beautiful their lives have been, sometimes painful, but always beautiful. And at the same time, their lessons that they're providing for you. Um, so, you know, to address this uh, question, uh, according to us as the Haudenosaunee, so we're the Mohawks, Oneidas, Onondagas, Cayugas, and Senecas, and then later on we adopted the Tuscarora, so that makes us the Six Nations. As the Six Nations people, uh, our culture, we call it Niyongwari Hodo, our culture and our way of life <clears throat> that we have been provided for, uh, in all the things that we have is maybe similar to your teachings, is that all of the things that we have have come to us from a place of spirit. Nothing in our teachings and nothing in our uh, ceremonies, our ways of life, have come out of the minds of men and women. No one sat there and thought to themselves, you know what we should do? Let's make this ceremony that would do this, this, and this. Or you know what we should do? We should organize ourselves, you know, in such a way as that we have clans and clan families. Or you know what we should do? Let's have clan mothers and chiefs and we'll make them hereditary. No one thought about that idea. That all came from a place of spirit. It came from messengers. It came from beings that visit us. It came from the manifestation of them. It came to dreams. It came from visions. All types of different processes, but all of the knowledge that we have, as similar to all of your knowledge, uh, it comes from a place of spirit. The reason I'm telling you that is because I want you to understand about how powerful and how perfect that knowledge is and how that has served our people throughout the long Way, uh, the long history of our existence as uh, indigenous peoples living in place, that it has enabled us to not only live and to sustain ourselves, but to flourish, to create civilizations that we have now, uh, now all of us are entrusted to be able to carry. So when we talk about bundles, it's important that you understand two things on it. One is that um, when we talk about uh, understanding bundles and the understanding the role of the human beings, our teachings talk to us that we come from Garon Hyage, the sky world, and the Sangwayatiso, our creator, is the one that sends us here. And as we travel from uh, 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 Garon Hyage, he gives us in our hand a little stick with a number of days on that. And that, that's, the, that's the number of days that we will continue to be here, and no one knows how long that's going to be. He provides us also with a, a, a duty, a purpose, and responsibility to achieve while we're here. And he provides us in order to do that with a series of gifts. They talk about then our, uh, us as spirit beings, we go into our mother, the earth, and that's the, our first mother. That's why we refer to her as our mother, the earth. And underneath that, uh, underneath the earth, 
as we uh, are there waiting for our mothers to walk over top of us. And maybe some of you have heard that uh, way that people have expressed that. They'll say, walk softly on the Mother Earth because you're walking on the faces of coming generations. You're walking on the coming faces. So that means then, whether that means that we're actually in the Earth or whether that means that if we destroy the Earth, then we destroy all the chances of life to continue. So the idea behind it is that uh, we, wait, we wait for our mothers to come over top of us, and that's why it's so important that women wear skirts to honor that life-giving power so that we come up through the soles of our mother's feet and we take a, a human form over nine months. And over that period of time, we are a spirit being wrapped in a physical being. We were born into the earth, a little boy or a little girl. And uh, when we, we then are entrusted, uh, again, to fulfill the responsibility in, uh, that we were given, to fulfill the purpose that we were given. We are given those gifts to be able to do that. And it's up to our, our grandmas and grandpas, our aunties and uncles, to watch over us and to help us as we uh, proceed in our life path. That life path that we have, that we have been given, <clears throat> they're the ones that guide us through that. We have ceremonies that help to guide us through that process so that we can achieve the purpose that we have fulfilled. In however many days that we have, uh, given, that we have been given life, sometimes it's just a half a breath of a baby. Sometimes it's a lot of notches on a stick that's an old man and an old woman. And I love the way that we refer to them in our language that we refer to them as Rodekstoha and Yagokstoha. Rodekstoha is an old man and Yagokstoha is an old woman. It means, uh, it doesn't mean old man and old woman. It means Rodekstoha, he, the root word is uh, a contraction from a larger word meaning Gasa Stensor, it means power. And uh, it means he has the power, she has the power. It doesn't mean physical power, it means a beautiful spiritual power and that we are willing to share that amongst each other, and that's our gift then as, as older people, that we have care and consideration, and that's why we have been given this life. So through that process and understanding that, you know, we have uh, various things that help us along the path, we have been given these opportunities to create bundles. And so these bundles then are the things that help us maintain our path, that help to teach us, support us, and, and imbue us. And they are there to protect us, to care for us, to provide for us, to direct us and teach us. And so as we're progressing through life, those bundles are the things that we uh, have. And so understand, too, that we as the human beings, we're the only one that has the, we're the only element in all of creation that has the capacity to have the freedom of choice. We're the only ones. Everything else can't stop doing the work that they have been entrusted to do by our great creator. They, ha they can't stop being a tree. They can't stop being a bird. They can't stop being a, a wolf or a bear. That's all they know is that. But we as the human beings, we're the ones that have the capacity and the privilege of having free will. And so in that bundle, we can choose to put in those things that are going to be there to help us along our life path. Or we can, put, we can choose to put those things in that bundle that will deter us, that will degrade us, that will destroy our lives, our choice. And by the, you know what I'm talking about when we talk about those. It's not just about alcohol and drugs and all the different things that impede us. It's about anger, fear, jealousy, greed, all of those things that are there to deter us off of our path. Our pathway and these beautiful people here at the, at, on the stage here with me, as well as many of you, are living examples of those beautiful uh, elements. And what we refer to them uh, when we, in our language, we refer to them as Gatnigon Rio. Gatnigon Rio is talking about a beautiful mind. But it just doesn't mean a beautiful mind. It means beautiful mindfulness. And what it means is, what's a beautiful mind? A beautiful mind is all of those things that help, that are the preeminent qualities of human existence. Love, compassion, kindness, empathy. All of those things that hold us up as the real human beings and on the other side of that is the not so good mind. Those are the things of fear, anger, jealousy, greed, selfishness, all of those other things that deter us, our choice, whatever we want to live by. So understand that not only within a spiritual sense and a physical sense that we have been given the opportunity to create bundles that help us along the way, but we also then have the opportunity to put those things that are going to deter us on that if we understand about the nature of these things that, are, that impede us. 
our responsibility. And, and uh, again, uh, I don't mean to, when I stand up like this, I don't mean to, um, uh, like I don't mean to be like a, I don't know, affrontive to you. So our understanding of that in our culture and our language and our teachings is that we, before we speak, uh, it's not us that are speaking, it's our ancestors and the great minds of our great ancestors and the great power of creation that is speaking through us. And so when we get up and speak, we ask them, <clears throat> Thank you, our great creator, that we're all still alive. Uh, <clears throat> we ask those four beings, how our understanding of it, that for us, the creator loves us, the human being, so much that he gave us four beings that look after us. That's their only job is to look after us. And if we ask them for help, they're always there, always there to help us, guide us, teach us, protect us, care for us, provide for us. They're always there for us. And when we ask them, <clears throat> is it possible that you could help me? <clears throat> Give me the right mind, the right words, the power and strength that I can be of service to them. So why? So that they, I can help them help life continue. That's what our bundles are all about. It's all about us having the opportunity and the power and strength to work for the continuation of all life. And we have a beautiful way of life. All of us as indigenous peoples have been given a culture. We have been given spirituality, ceremonies, systems of government, families, connections to the earth and understanding of the physical as well as the metaphysical. And I like to say that we have, you know, the great privilege, and many of you will know, and in particular, all of you will know about this, is that we have in our cultures, in our respective cultures, how beautiful and how powerful that they are. We have the capacity uh, and the opportunity within our respective cultures to call the thunders out of the clear blue sky. Think about that. A little bit of Oyankwa Ome, a song, special words, and those beautiful grandfathers, they come for us. Why? Because they love us so much. And our responsibility is to care and to love for them. So that's the piece that I want to share with you is that when we talk about bundles, it's not just the physical bundles, it's also the spiritual bundles. And it's also then for us to use our minds, the best minds that we can, to put those things in, those, uh, in our bundles that will help us to fulfill the responsibility that we're given as human beings to work for the continuation of all life. Ona eto nagahonage da ito. Big round of applause and thanks to uh, Dan. Miigwech, Dan. All right. I want to acknowledge a couple of things before we get to our second round of, uh, round of questions. That isn't this better than federal leaders' election debates, this kind of talk? <laughs> was never sure, though. We, sometimes we fight amongst each other, and, uh, but not as bad as those uh, federal leaders. But I want to acknowledge a couple of people uh, here in the room. Chris Whitaker, the president of Humber College, joining us here today again. So a round of applause and thanks for Chris Whitaker for being here. The second people I want to acknowledge are the students that were here, the students of Humber College. Yeah, raise your voices for the students. In particular, we've got a, a second row uh, on the second floor. Some folks are just kind of uh, listening as they go. We got the, uh, this, uh, these, the stands up there. Uh, people uh, sitting there, and of course the folks at home that are on webcast. So you're being beamed all over the planet. People are watching you from all the way in New Zealand, even though it's uh, it's pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> this second question, we're going to make this a rapid fire round, short round, real short question, but a bit of storytelling. It's really up to you. I'm not going to time you. But the question is, think of a time where you've had challenges. Think of these students. They're going to oh, have those kinds of challenges in their lives. Uh, when you have those challenges, those barriers to overcome, you know, what gives you the strength to overcome those things? What gives you the strength to look after that bundle, your, uh, health, that wellness that you have? So think of that time if you want to share a bit of uh, an experience that went through and how did you overcome that? How did you uh, use the, those strengths of that bundle to go through that? So, Sinikwe, you get to go first again. 
our radio from Lee. Well, for me, uh, it's always that um, tobacco, eh? The same ma, the same ma gi min de gomen, jinni ga neet, bago send mang join chigewin, ani ni ge, ge shen ad ma goin, bago send mang. Anishna, Geshe Chigayamba, Wind of Motion, in the Mishomis, in Gokumis. Join the mission, not the motion. Is you no know motion? We've been given some beautiful, beautiful medicines, has already been uh, mentioned. And for us as an Anishinaabe, it's always that tobacco that goes ahead. So whenever you're in need of help, if you're lost, whether it's a dark place, a depression, it's asking with humility for help. Give me the guidance that I need at this time in my life. And for me, uh, again, just being blessed by spirit, by the grandmothers and the grandfathers, and being shown dreams. And again, listening and paying attention to the spirit within and being able to search deep within myself. What is it that I need to do at this time? Where do I need to focus my attention and my life? And it has worked for me, maybe not right away, but it has. Faith, whether it's your dodem, the helpers, the help that you've been given, you've been shown. Pauline talked about the thunder beings. Dan talked about the thunder beings. And it was one of my uncles from Treaty 3 area when he took me into the sweat lodge and I was asking for help. And he put me in the sweat lodge and he said, my girl, you have suffered enough. Now these ones will help you. And so in that sweat lodge, that name, Neobanesik, came. It came in the form of that spiritual help from the thunder beings. When I was searching and looking as a young woman and I was directed to elders in my community for a name. And um, it was a time when uh, my community, even my family, um, uh, what do you want to do with that Indian stuff for? <laughs> just leave it alone. You're just going to get hurt. You're the one that's going to get hurt. Leave it alone. Don't rock the boat. Leave it. But as I said before, there was a very, very strong intuitive sense that I felt that this is what I needed to do. This is what I was being moved to do, to seek out that knowledge, to seek out the knowledge keepers. And so I went to um, a grandmother, Susan Enose, and um, the name that she found, that she saw was a Sinique, 
And at the time, I kind of wondered, what's she giving me a stone woman for? Rock woman. But her thing was, she saw what I was, the obstacles that were in the way. And she said, you will overcome. And you've started something here. You've picked up this knowledge. You're seeking knowledge. You're picking it up. And there are others who don't agree. They don't see that. So you're going to find obstacles and people are going to put you down. So this name is going to help you strong, be strong and determined and don't stop. Whatever you do, do not stop. You keep going, you keep moving. You be determined, you hang on to this faith. The, the spirit of that rock will help you and hang on to that faith and believe. Believe in that spirit that, that, uh, that has asked you to move, mm. to do what you're being asked to do. And so um, it's been, like I said, 45 years, and I see that beautiful lodge standing in my community where they didn't want it before. They didn't want me to. And again, it's faith. And um, believing in that, the spirit that has moved you, that has dreams, it's spirit that I didn't ask. Personally, I didn't ask for to be a drum carrier, to be a pipe carrier. Others dreamt and said, here, and put something, that bundle in front of me. And it's not me. It's for the people. It is to serve the people, as already been said. It's to help the people. These items that are placed in front of us it's for you, it's for them. And so it's not to serve myself, it's to serve the community. It's to serve my people because I have children. I have grandchildren. I have great-grandchildren. It's the same thing with medicines. When I wanted to learn about medicines, I asked, it was Sam Azamic I went to, and again, he said, you can learn, but you can't practice. Right now, you've got a bundle, and these are your little ones. That's, your, that's what you have to look after first. Someday, you will know. You will know when to go and begin that work. It wasn't until after I was finished my childbearing years when I felt that pull to go into the swamp and gather medicine. And I felt the swamp welcoming me as I walked into that, that moss with the Labrador tea. And uh, I saw the plants in there was my, my sister, Kathy Bird, who led me and said, I want you to meet somebody. And I kind of wondered, well, who does she want me to meet in the middle of nowhere? We're out gathering, harvesting medicines, and just the two of us out. And then she led me into the swamp. And as I walked into the swamp, Believe it or not, my belly did a dance. And each time I took a step into that moss, that carpet that covered the swamp, I felt energy seep from the balls of my feet all the way up. I take another step and again, energy seeping all the way up and welcoming me. Welcome home, my girl welcome home. And when I went in there, I saw this most beautiful, beautiful flower. And uh, it was a flower in the swamp. 
And um, I said to Kathy, I said, how come I'm crying? It's making me cry. She's the one I want you to meet, and she is a woman's medicine. And this medicine is for cancer. And um, that's really what drew me the first, that's how it spoke to me. And so I, I don't call myself a medicine woman, but I, I love being in the swamp. I love being in the, in the bush, in the, in the forest. That's my sanctuary. That's where I get that sense of being revitalized, re-energized. I picked the month of August, I picked a lot of Nemepin and, and Peguis uh, this past summer, and I would just lie there and uh, feel that energy from, from the earth and that strong bond that you can feel with, with your mother. It's such an incredible, beautiful, beautiful feeling as you dig your hands into the earth and you pick that medicine and you sing. You sing because each plant, each medicine has a song and so it, anyway, I'm going on, so. Miigwech. Nemepin, that's a strong medicine. You, you sing because it keeps you awake and present because, you know, if you pick too much of that, sometimes it'll, it's so strong, it'll lull you to sleep and maybe medicine. never wake up again. Hey. Ron! Have you had any, uh, any challenges, any barriers you needed to overcome? And what kind of strengths did you bring to overcome those barriers? What, kind of, what did you use from your bundle? Yeah, no, no barriers at all, to be honest. No, I have. <laughs> um, I think uh, w when I was listening to, to the, the Toa, to, to the old lady talking, um, she said exactly the, the same story that I was going to tell, but in, in a different way and in a different voice. But amazingly, the story that she told was, was in my mother's voice. Um, and it was going to be the, the story that I told about my own mother. Uh, when I was a, a young fella, uh, way back in the day, when we, as people, were going through our own struggles of, of, of um, trying to get acceptance from the larger, the wider community, of who we were and trying to get them to, to understand who we were as people. We went through the, the same struggles, the exact same struggles as, as you are now and, and as you described. And I remember when I was a, a boy of about nine or ten years old and my mother and, and, and my auntie um, on one Waitangi day, and Waitangi day is when we celebrate the signing of our treaty wasn't too much of a celebration those days but now we're learning to celebrate that coming together a bit more in our place but on this day I remember my mother and my auntie were sitting in, in the window of a radio station weaving and I said to my mother I said well, what's this going to do how is this going to uh, tell people who we are or how is this going to make people change their minds and understand who we are as people and she, she looked at me and she said, boy, you've got to start somewhere. You know, you've got to start somewhere. In the place that I grew up 40 years ago to, to, to sit in the, in the window of a radio station and weave, that was all the community could handle. That was all that, that, that people that weren't us could, could, could see. That's all they wanted to see. And my mother taught me patience. She, I think she was a stone woman as well. She was a beautiful, gentle person, but knew the way forward and wouldn't be changed. And when I look at that now, that, that, that lesson that she gave me about patience, about taking time and things will change. And I'm lucky enough in the position that I'm in, in the, uh, I'm in, in the institution that I'm in, that now every year when we get new students coming in through the door, we welcome them. Every single first-year student that comes into our institution, we welcome them with our language, with our song, with a sharing of breath. And that's something that my mother would only ever dream about. 
We're not finished on our journey. I know that I still have her bundle. I still have her with me, telling me, boy, you've got to start somewhere. And we're still starting. We're still going. We're not going to end up where we want to be in my lifetime. And that's fine, as long as we keep moving forward on that journey. Hmm. You go, Tron. Lucille. What if, uh, do you have a story of uh, perhaps what you've uh, been going through a challenge or some kind of barrier, and how did you overcome that? Oh my God, where shall I start? Okay, um, I've had a rough life, and um, as you know, um, I went back to my uh, traditional uh, teachings traditional values, and they're talking about medicines. I went back to that, to um, uh, learning about the medicines that uh, I should have learned already when we, uh, when we heard about the legends long time ago. So, um, yeah, I, um, I just have to say that uh, I've earned the right um, to get over um, the barriers that stop me from being who I am today. If any of you guys have ever been to the Parliament building in Ottawa, you're going to see the glass painting there. That little girl with the short haircut is me. And I'm not smiling because why, why should I smile at the time? I was really sad because of the residential school. So I worked with um, Christy Belcourt with um, the stained glass window, and we talked about um, how can we get the message across to the people, especially the ones who have uh, been to residential school. So um, we talked about the hope. We talked about moving forward. and. I think um, it's best that uh, in the school curriculum that our students know about that. You know, our students today say, ah, oh, it's boring, uh, it, I had a hard time. They don't know what going through hard time is about. So I kind of wanted that to be in the curriculum. Uh, that that's uh, a big step for the students to know what what really happened. So um, so I've, I've um, you know earned uh, the right to be here. I earned the right to carry this feather, which was given to me by um, he, uh, she's a veteran, eight eight year veteran. So. Uh, she gave this to me even before she passed away. So after she passed away, she made sure that I got this feather. So I'm not sure about the, the ribbons. I just like the colors. She never told me what the ribbons are for. So I've earned that too. And I'm going to tell you something. Um, my granddaughter, um, she graduated high school and everything, and then she stayed home like for about three years, and she didn't have no motivation whatsoever to do something with her life. She didn't. It seemed like uh, uh, every, every problem that she come with, um, she couldn't handle it for some reason. She, she didn't have uh, the motivation to uh, even stand up for herself. And I wondered, she's a healthy woman, she's pretty, beautiful and everything, because I'm a pipe carrier. I was a pipe carrier too. I thought about it one night. And I'm thinking, my granddaughter has a right to carry this pipe for me. So I talked with her. I offered her, Sam, uh, 
and I gave her my bundle of um, where I kept my pipe and my um, the four medicines that I was given when I went through Metewin. I gave her those two. Um, today, she's happy. She graduated the uh, uh, social services work, and then she's she studied. She went on to study um, um, NARAP. To this day, I don't know what NARAP means, but I know she helps people who are struggling with <laughs> alcohol and drugs. <laughs> Anyways, that's what she does. She's a counselor. So, and you know, I think that stemmed from that stemmed from me giving her the tobacco and the pipe including my bundle, just to help her get back on her feet. Because what if I didn't do that at the time? I don't even want to know where she'd be today. Because of the drugs, alcohol, I don't know about in your communities, but we do have a problem with that in our communities. And I do a lot of work, like I try to um, bring our culture our traditional sacred teachings so that, um, you know, it'll help the students. Um, that's, one of the, that's one of the teachings that I always have. Go, you know, look for your root, look for uh, where you come from, be proud of who you are. So um, we did uh, some work with the um, uh, missing, murdered indig indigenous women. And uh, they talked about the vamps. I don't know if any of you guys um, ever heard of that. But I got together. Uh, I managed to uh, get some ladies together from the Treaty Tree area, where I'm from. And we started beating. We started beating the, the vamps, even though they're only half finished. And the reason for that is because the missing, murdered women never finished their lives. That's why, they're called, that's why we call them the vamps. So we started beating, and we, you had to be more creative and think about these women. You may not know who they are, but still, um, it touches, it touched my heart knowing that they're missing. And uh, so we started uh, beating our um, vans, and I come up with uh, um, one lady and then another lady on the other side, and she's got four um, lights above her head. And, I'm th and then I'm thinking, she's an angel now, so she probably sees these pretty lights. Now, I got to tell you, my sister, I'm only uh, two years older than her, but she was the type that didn't want to do nothing. Go thank goodness she's not here. Anyways, <laughs> she, that's the first time she ever beat it. First time ever. So she picked up her vamps and she knew what the story is about and everything. And so she starts beating. And then um, halfway through, she goes, oh no, I made a big mistake on my vamps. Guess what? She put white out on her vamps. And you know what happens when you put white out, eh? It hardened um, the paper and material. So. She had to finish th those vamps, and then uh, by the time she finished, her fingers were all bandaged up, and she, she was bleeding right on her vamps. And I told her, you know, that's beautiful, uh, leaving your blood on those vamps. Look at all the missing, murdered women. What, how, did they, how did they die? How did they disappear? What happened to them? So, and then the other best thing that happened to her is that uh, the magazines that came out, her uh, picture is on there holding her vamps, her vamps. And so you know what? 
it was a big challenge for her. So I say to the youth, to the students, try it out, try it. Because you'll surprise yourself. You'll surprise um, what gifts you carry because each and every one of us were given gifts. Find yours, miigwech. Pauline, same question. Okay, I just want to uh, uh, relate uh, a natural story that happened with me, uh, with my sister. I just buried her four months ago and her name is Ursula Collins in Alberta, and uh, when I was uh, six years old, she came, she had to be, she had to be, uh, she, we got her, uh, my mom and dad got her out of the residential school because a ball had hit her right in the, you know, in the forehead, and she, uh, and, and she had, you know, seizures and everything, you know, just, it was really, it was really sad to see that, so we brought her home, you know, and uh, my mom and dad, and one night, it had to be the night, okay. uh, must have been around 10, 11 o'clock at night. It was drizzling outside and in, uh, on the reserve, you know, we had, a, we had uh, the, uh, the, you know, we didn't have the heating uh, in those days. This was uh, in the 50s, in the 60s. And, uh, and so uh, she had one of her seizures while we were in bed. So my, my mother, uh, my dad woke me up. And I was only six years old, you know, and I wanted to, you know, sleep and all that. But then I heard her screaming and yelling and really in pain, you know, the next bedroom. So I said, I, uh, I listened to my father. He says, you have to go and get your grandma. Do you know how far my grandma lived? About two miles away. And, uh, and I was the only one in there because I only had about three little sisters. And uh, so what he did was, first of all, he offered, uh, and you know, uh, the uh, cedar. Cedar is not very plentiful in Alberta, but we always had a bundle, but we had lots of sage. So he offered that, that uh, medicine and prayed, and he uh, offered tobacco. And then he had this pouch of tobacco. He says, you have to go and get your grandma. And I said, I didn't say anything. So he dressed me up. As a little girl, he dressed me up and made sure I wasn't going to be wet. And he put a hat on me. And, and uh, he gave me a big pouch of tobacco, not a little one, a big pouch of tobacco. He says, Go and give this to your grandma. And then he says, uh, before he gave me that uh, pouch of tobacco, he says, stand in front of me and look into my eyes. So I did. I looked into my, uh, you know, uh, into my father's eyes, you know, those beautiful eyes. And he says, you're going to be safe. The creator is going to be with you. So Sasquatch is going to be with you. And, uh, and, there, and, and in our land, there were, there were cougars, there were bears, there were, you know, uh, every, every wild animal that you can have. All the family was there. And, uh, and he said, the last thing he said to me was, you'll be safe, you'll be safe. And uh, the... Uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't afraid because I could hear my sister, you know, that scream. She needed that help. She needed that medicine. And so I uh, said, the last, one of the other last things he said to me was, all your helpers are over there, the horses, you know. So I said, okay. So he put a, a, a lantern. Can you imagine a six-year-old uh, with a big lantern, you know, for me to carry? He says, he says, look at me again. He says, do not drop this. He says, do not drop that sema. Put it in your, put it, you know, he put it in my hand. And uh, so, so I said, okay. So my instructions were to go and get my grandma with that tobacco and that lantern in the middle of the night. It's about two miles away. And there was, uh, I had to go through hills and, you know, 
rough road. There were no such things as paved roads in those days, and uh, and it was muddy. I had they put rubbers on me, so I went. I walked out the door, and uh, he's at last, you know, when I walked out the door, he says, "Sagi then, Sagi then, Adonis." He says, so. With that, with those beautiful words, I went, went into the uh, yard, went into the, by the barn, and I, you know, by a big hill, big, big hill. When I look at that hill nowadays, it's small, but those days it was big for me, so, and I was so, 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 so careful not to drop the lantern, and uh, as best as I could, and I says, you know, everything, and the universe, I could feel the universe. I could feel grandpa, grandma, everything, you know, even the animals, I could feel them. They were, they were still, they were helping me. They knew I had this tobacco on me. So I walked and walked through the fields. And, and by one of the fields, I had to go through a barbed wire fence. So I, I did that. And then I had to go through another dirt road and in there, there were some uh, pine trees. And in those pine trees, none of the relatives would ever, ever go through that woods because there was an entity in there that they were afraid of, OK? And so nothing touched me. I just went, went, walked very slowly up the hill, down the hill, up the hill to my grandpa. And you know what? My grandma, when I knocked on the door, my grandma was all ready. She had her bag, her medicine bag. She knew. I mean, there was no such thing as telephones in those days or tele TVs, you know. So we walked, and she said, and she uh, offered that tobacco. So she, we, took, we took off, and we came home. We came home. And I'll never, I'll never, you know, I forgot that story for a long, long time. But because I have children, I have grandchildren, and I try to do the best way as I can to them about our way of life, about their safety, about their bundles, about their medicines, about the songs, and what the, uh, you know, what the our helpers are. So I came home, and... Right away, my, uh, they, uh, they, you know, there was water boiling in there. Right away, she put her medicines and, you know, whatever she had to do. My sister lived through that night, and her seizures stopped like that. So to me, what, you're, what you posed that question to me reminds me of that. So I thank you for listening, you know. You probably have beautiful stories like that in your life, too. Keep them in your heart, okay? Uh -huh, miigwech. Uh, Dan, what kind of uh, challenges have you, uh, have you overcome using your bundle uh, to uh, give you that strength? Oh, uh, I didn't finish telling you the rest of that story, so let me just finish with this. Um, so then, uh, remember I told you about asking for help to have the right kind of mind, the right thoughts, the right words, the power and strength to be able to deliver it. That process then, in honor of that, you know, that's why we're, they ask us to stand up. Because the four beings, and they hear, who is it among the uh, human beings has called, uh, called to us? Who's asked us for help? And then when you stand up and they'll say, oh, it's him that's standing up, or her that's standing up, that's the ones that will help. That's why they ask us. So in honor of our traditions, that's why uh, in, our, in our ways, that's why we're, uh, we are required to stand if we ask for that kind of help. So let me uh, give you a couple of just a, a, a real quick spot because I know, because well, I know that um, being the last person to talk just before lunch is waiting is a bad place to be. <clears throat> so uh, let me give you a couple of really uh, interesting pieces. So I've, I had a really, um, I had an interesting life. You know, I had in many ways I had a blessed life. I had a hard life, but at the same time, my life has really been blessed. You know, I've had so many good friends. I had a beautiful family. Uh, hard times growing up, but you know we were able to overcome that, and and uh, and really for me, like um, you know the uh, kind of as I can tell you, like as I stand before you today, you know I was not always like the way I am today. When I was uh, younger, I was a pretty bad boy, 
So uh, <clears throat> caused me a lot of different, um, you know, pain and, and hardship along the way. But, you know, somewhere along that process, you know, I began to listen to what those old people were telling me. And so, um, uh, so I guess really what I'm going to share with you is that, uh, you know, a, a number of different things that have helped me along the way. Uh, many of you know uh, uh Tom Porter. Um, so Tommy uh, talks about, you know, the things that we need as human beings. He talks about that uh, the first thing that we, uh, that we really need is our language. And um, I can tell you that, um, you know, as a second language learner and uh, embracing language, um, and uh, I only know like this much of language, I only know this much of our culture, but I'm going to tell you that that much is so ayagunoro, it's so precious, it's so powerful. That, that little bit, that small little bit, that changed my whole life. So that having our culture and having our language and understanding about how important those things, that opens up a whole way, a whole different way of seeing the world in how we as English speakers <clears throat> have been kind of taught or how we see the world as English speakers. When you see the, the world, you know, in our original languages, uh, and you see how beautiful it is, and you see how all those things are connected. Our, our languages, according to uh, linguists, uh, linguists, they talk to us that they say that it's a polysynthetic language, which means that you start with a root word and you add something onto the front and something onto the back, and for Mohawk, then you end up with a really big word, a really long word. But uh, the idea behind it is that it is a complete thought. So in, the, in understanding the language, it tells you a complete thought. It tells you, you know, a description of a particular thing. So it opens up to us, you know, like a whole different way of understanding the world. So in English, you know, I'll just give you really one example. And yeah, we, like I think we could be here all day. But um, I'll just give you one little example. So like in English, we say, um, you know, mother or we say mom or for most of us we say ma. So uh, that word, uh, the origin of that word is a Greek word, and uh, the origin of that it means breastfeeder, breastfeeder. And as endearing as that kind of connotation and that brings to our minds, um, it doesn't do justice to how, uh, in, within our languages in, in particular, how we see it. So in our language you can say, aget uh, nisteha, uh, aget is her to me. The word uh, is the contraction of that larger word, as I mentioned to before, about power. It refers to the power of life. And uh, when you say, you're understanding and you're saying to your mother that you, to me, gave me life. So every time you see your mother, you're acknowledging that she's the one that gave you life. Look how beautiful that is. So in our, uh, in our culture, as matrilineal people, my mother and all of her sisters, I uh, greet them as Agetni Steha, my mother. They, uh, then in that case, you know, they have, um, and my mother's family, and my mother had a big family, so they had like uh, 12 kids, so they had uh, five, uh, <clears throat> five girls and, uh, and, and seven boys. And um, so th all of those five girls, they were uh, like my mother. So in one way it was good, but in, for a little guy, a bad boy, then it was kind of not too good. So, you know, they were the ones that could chastise me, just like my mother. But the point of it is, is that, you know, we, we understand that word. And every time I acknowledge that my aunties, I call them a getni steha. Then I'm, uh, and again, the same thing, a getni steha, we can refer that, we can shorten that to say nista, uh, to make it shorter. Or we can say ista, as in you know, mother, mom, and ma. So if we say, uh, and we're saying that to my aunties, then they have, uh, I'm acknowledging the life-giving power of that. And so now, because our culture has changed, any woman of my mother's age, uh, then I can greet them as as my mother. So out of a sense of respect for them. So understand this, it's this, then as a young boy, seeing uh, and acknowledging uh, all of those women, we are acknowledging uh, the life-giving power, the sacredness of women. And so because of that, then our behavior has to fall in line with that. 
that we care for them, love them, honor them, that we're kind to them. And I was not always that way, but through a process of language learning, I began to understand about how beautiful and how powerful that is. And at the same time, you know, as a young girl growing up, like within a modern society here, you know, when you go from that, you know, period where you're a little girl into having your first uh, uh, menstruation and you become a woman, that celebration and the recognition of that is a, is a beautiful time. But in a modern society, it's not taken that way. It's just like, here's some pads and here's a book and uh, welcome to womanhood for the next 40 years. Um, but within our, within our traditions, uh, it's a great time of honoring and it's a great time of recognition and it's a celebration because now that little girl has moved from being a little girl to a life giver. And so she has that power, that strength, and that's recognized and honored and, and appreciated and our gratitude is extended to her. The behavior that it causes just within our language is really powerful. So our language is a key consideration of that. But he also, what, what um, Tama also talks about is that uh, we need to have our clans. And uh, for us as matrilineal peoples, then we follow our mother's clans and so we have then to uh, revitalize and to know our clans and to know uh, who we are. And within our clans, our clans are the ones that give us our names. And our names are very descriptive of uh, what the work that we have to do. So it provides for us then a direction and a way of being, uh, of being in the world. So our language, our <coughs> clans, our name. And then he says our clothes. And what that means is that that just doesn't mean our clothes. It means our culture, our way of life, all the things that we have been given. That we, it's, a, it's important for us to know that. And again, what he talks about is, you know, for men in particular, the fifth thing that he talked about was uh, our Adunwa songs, our men's Thanksgiving songs. Uh, the chants that we have that we use when we have ceremonies, it's one of the four sacred ceremonies that we have in our longhouse, is to have those songs. So uh, to see those kind of things and to see the power of our culture and what has provided for us, those are the things that have really helped me along my path. And uh, I'll share with you like the, one of the teachings of my, of my great teacher, the late Jake Thomas. And uh, man, he was a really awesome guy. And um, I'm so thankful to have him as a teacher. So Jake says, um, uh, he says that recognizing what our ancestors have been given and he talks about this idea of ojir. And ojir talks about a fire. And when we understand a fire, we understand that uh, that's the same word that's involved in, in stars. Uh, ojistokwa. Ojistokwa is talking about the light or the fire in the sky. Uh, ojir is talking about the fire here. Ogwajare is our family fire and, uh, and, our, and our spiritual fire. So when you see that we have a, the spirit in this, the light in the, the fire in the sky, the fire that we have here, our family fire, our council fire, our individual spiritual fire, then he talks about that what we need to do is uh, understand that uh, our responsibility while we're here is to take those burning embers, that's our culture, our way of life, our language, all the ceremonies, all the different things that we've been given, those embers and to carefully uncover those embers and to rekindle a fire. And he says and when that fire is bright and you can imagine like on a cold winter night like this and you all know what that's like when you go outside and there's a beautiful fire there, that we rekindle that fire, all of us, and we have a role and responsibility in rekindling it and we all enjoy the heat and the beautiful warmth that comes from that and we see those flames dancing and we're thankful and we're happy because that warms our, not only us, but it warms our hearts. And so when we set that fire like that, what he talks about is that that's the thing that warms us. And he says, and our culture is like a big blanket. And he says, our culture wraps around us and keeps us warm. So he says, uh, when, uh, uh, as an example, he says, when you don't have your culture, and he says, uh, you'll stand by that fire and you'll be warm by that. That's our way of life, our culture, our, our, our spirituality. And he says, you'll be warm by that. But when you leave that and when you begin to walk away, you start to get cold. And the further you get away from that, the further you remove yourself from that, the colder you get to the point where you can freeze to death. You can lose your life. 
and not be warmed by that. But he says, your culture is like a beautiful blanket. And he says, it wraps you up. So you can go anywhere you want wrapped in the beautiful power and the beautiful warmth of your culture, the love of your culture. It's like, so wrap it up. So for students then, being able to understand about how important these things are and understanding the necessity of engaging with our knowledge and our, our ways of life, our language, uh, our identity, all the different things that we have, you're on a learning path. And I like to say that in a learning path, that you're on a learning journey, but at the same time to recognize the necessity of engaging with a, also a healing journey. As many of you have heard, you know, through the discussions and the sharing that you've had. So we need to understand that the responsibility of us as human beings is to work to understand that we're on a living learning journey. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, you're never going to learn at all. But the minute you stop learning is the minute you stop living. So the idea behind it is that for us, we're on a learning journey, but we need to wrap that because of the trauma, the, uh, the, I want to call it the intergenerational trauma that has impacted all of us. We need to be able to understand the necessity of working to heal ourselves. And that bundle and the things that we have, our ceremonies, our language, our ways of life, our understanding of the world, that's what will help us. That's what will heal us in the, as we move forward. So that why? So that we can fulfill the responsibility that we're given to work for the continuation of life. Now. Now, miigwech. A big round of applause for Dan. Dan Longboard. <laughs> Oh, very nice, a lot of you. All right, let's uh, give it up for all of these uh, panelists one more time, uh, beginning with Ron Bull. Thank you, Ron Bull, from Otago Polytechnic. Edna Manitowabi Sinikwe. A Pauline Shirt, Nimki Kwe. And uh, Lucille Kelly Davis, miigwech. And Pauline Shirt, give them a big round of applause. Lots of voice here. All right, so Pauline gave us this, Our Future, How Kids Are Taking Action, and it's a beautiful book of lots of stories of young people. We are going to give this to, uh, uh, to a lucky one of you, and we're going to auction it off in true Nishnabe way, and we're going to give, uh, I'm going to suggest, uh, it could be a charity of your choice, but I'm suggesting you give to Native Men's Residents. Uh, homeless uh, shelter providing programs here in the community because it's starting to get cold outside. And there's still a lot of Nishnabe men and women that are living on the street that need that help. So I'm suggesting, but it'll be up to you, however uh, you want to give, but I'm suggesting Native Men's Residents and their holiday bundle program. So Bindige Gija, come on up here. Bindige is a pretty skilled uh, auctioneer and he's our MC. Give him a round of applause, Bindige Gija. Yeah, I should have been an auctioneer too. I probably, <laughs> probably could have made a lot of money doing that, actually. Because you know when they go, I don't know what they're saying, but it make it sound good. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. We'll start, uh, let's just do, let's start with a $20 bid, and we'll just keep working our way up. All right? Sound good? Yeah? So who's got 20? I've uh, got 20. 20 over here. Who's got 30? 30. 30 over there. Who's got 40? 40. I got 40 over here. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50 here. 60. 60. 60. Who's got 60? Who's it? 60 over there. 70. 70. 70. 70. 70. Come on. 70. 70 over there. All right. You got a half bid. We'll take 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. 75. <laughs> Almost sounds like I'm speaking Ganyahage, Ganyahage. <laughs> just, just kidding. <laughs> I had a Mohawk teacher in the university, and that's how he would speak sometimes. <laughs> but uh, 75 going once. 75. Oh, 75. There we go. 80. Did we hear 80? Remember, it's cold outside. 80, right there. 80. We got 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 
Who's got a hundred? Hundred, 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 hundred. Who's got a hundred? Give me a hundred. Hundred there from Tasha. Hundred and five, hundred and five, hundred and five. Here we go. Hundred and five. Hundred and five dollars. Who's got a hundred and five? One oh five going once. One oh five going twice. So oh, I, oh 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 I didn't say I'm gonna get it. Yeah, 105. So 110, 110, 110, 110, 110, 110. We gotta get it. Liz Ozama's got 105. Who's got 110, 110, 110? Come on now, 110. 110 going once, 120. No hunger, Scott. Nope. Oh, 125. There we go. 125. Here we go. Remember, it's for a good cause here. 125 going once. 125, 125, 125, 125. 130. Here we go, 130 over here. So who's got 135? 135, 135, 135. 135 going once, 135, 135. 135 going twice. And, oh, 135 right here. Came in at the last minute. How come you guys wait till the last minute there? You guys really get into this auctioning thing. You gotta wait till the, maybe it's a, maybe it's a bid thing here. All right, so 135, 140. 140 over here to Liz. 140, 140, 145, 145, 145. Who's got 145, 145, 145? 145, there we go. Who's got 150, who's got 150? 150 over here, to back to Liz. Who's got 155, 155, 155? I think you guys just like to hear me saying that. 155 going twice. Sold for 150. There we go. Miigwech to Liz. Beautiful book there. All right, a chimigwech. To all of our panelists, to our moderator, for doing such a great job and uh, sharing such beautiful stories and talking about those great gifts and those great bundles. And so uh, to honor our uh, panelists here, uh, all of our knowledge keepers, uh, the Kwewag are going to offer up a song uh, to honor our... our uh, our knowledge keepers here. Aha bojo. Uh give you me when they go. When did we ma I make to them? Me when sh uh the kid no go. We um up to go kitchen and me go. We honor you today. We would like to sing the Miigwech song to honor you, to give you thanks for this beautiful life that you have shared to our communities, to our home territories. So we want to acknowledge and honor you with this beautiful song. Miigwech. You can stand up at this time, please.
Ao Nikonagara Miigwech to our Kwewag, Miigwech to all of our panelists for all of the knowledge they shared with us. Uh, miigwech, everyone. And so that uh, brings us to lunch, everybody's favorite time of the day. Hey. Just kidding, but it is. So no, lunch is uh, ready. Uh, so we are going to break for lunch. We are coming back here at 1.15. So we're going to give you till 1.15 and we're calling everybody back here uh, to come and gather at the tables. Oh, somebody lost their parking swipe, so you're not going to be able to get out of the uh, parking area unscathed. So if you lost your parking uh, card, here it is up here. So 115, everybody, 115. So get some lunch. Lunch is served over by the breakfast area there. Uh, get something to eat. But we are coming back for 115. So make your way back here. And then we have some great, great breakout <laughs> sessions this afternoon to lead you through. I was looking at the Maori greeting over here where they touch foreheads. I don't know if that would have worked so well in Indian, you know, Anishinaabe country. Because by the end of the day, we get pretty greasy. So. <laughs> Touching foreheads might not have been just sharing grease between each other. So let's, uh, let's make sure the elders, our elders are fed and uh, get an opportunity to get up to the uh, food line. Uh, but if we could get some helpers to maybe make sure that our elders are taken care of, uh, to make sure they get a dish, so get our elders fed. So let's make sure our elders get up and uh, get to the food line or somebody, one of their helpers gets up there and makes a dish for them. I think, uh, Auntie Polly is going to get taken care of here. John, good to see you too. Okay, sure. But the uh, food is there, so elders, please make your way back there. Helpers to the elders, make your way back and go get yourself some uh, medium. And then we are calling everybody back here for 1.15, and we are going to gather, we're going to make our way to the breakout sessions, and some great discussions are going to happen this afternoon, some forward thinking, some provocative thinking about how to better, and how to prepare those bundles, and how to help students here at the college prepare their bundles, and ensure they have a strong bundle uh, in the work that they have to carry forward in life. So. 1.15, everyone, we'll make our way back. So please enjoy lunch, enjoy an opportunity to visit, get to know each other. Uh -huh. some more. 